But we think we're real. Couldn't our universe also be a simulation? Does it even matter if we're real? Hello, Internet. I'm Ren, and I want to talk about the season 11 finale of Futurama All the Way Down. The title is a reference to Turtles All the Way Down, which commonly expresses the problem of infinite regress. It's definitely worth looking up if you're curious. The episode takes a look at simulation theory and breaks it down in a really interesting and delightfully zany way. I think this episode did a great job balancing its sci-fi elements with the more introspective and sentimental elements. There are also some really nice moments between Fry and Leela that help make up for last week's episode, and Bender gets some great material as well that fits with the themes of some of his more existential episodes. So let's get into it. Spoilers for All the Way Down and Futurama in general from this point onwards, you have been warned. We open to a pixelated version of the Planet Express building and ship, then zoom out to see the crew gathered around a conference table watching it. The professor explains he's created a simulation of the entire universe, including a simulated Planet Express crew. The simulation is powered by a giant computer called the Simputron, but even at low resolution it uses a lot of power to run an entire universe. How'd you make it so crummy? It wasn't easy. Even to achieve this level of realism requires vast amounts of computing power. We watch the pixelated crew make a delivery to Space Italy. Pixel Bender is almost immediately arrested for bonking the Space Pope with a package. Papa Pia! He hit the Space Pope! You're under arrest for a banking his holiness. And Pixel Fry and Leela take the opportunity to see the sights. It's incredibly sweet, and the pixelated style looks really cool in the wide shots. And it was just nice to see Fry and Leela together having fun, even in low resolution. The professor explains that the people in the simulation think they're real. So, do those people in the casserole know they're in a simulation, or do they think that they're real? Of course they think they're real. To them, the rules of my software are just their laws of physics. Then Amy asks the obvious question. But we think we're real. Couldn't our universe also be a simulation? The professor is unconvinced. The very idea is preposterous. How can you be so sure? Because it's computationally impossible. But Amy keeps prodding. My software can't possibly compute the gravitational changes between Bender's ass and every other particle, so I had to have the information travel outward gradually at a fixed speed. Like the speed of light in our universe? Side note, I love that it's Amy asking these questions since she's Dr. Wong now. We honestly don't get enough references to the fact that she's a scientist, especially this season. So it's nice to see her using her skills here and kind of giving the professor a bit of a run for his money. The professor uses another example to explain how the simulated universe differs from theirs, which is basically just a superposition Schrodinger's cat type thing that Bender demonstrates. And Amy points out the similarity to quantum mechanics. So your programming shortcut is like quantum mechanics in our world? Exactly like that. <coughs> and finally convinces the professor that their universe might also be a simulation. Hmm, interesting. I guess what I'm trying to say is, our universe is probably also a simulation. Amy also rains on Bender's parade by pointing out that his personality and intelligence are artificial and simulated. Man, imagine how awful it would be to find out your whole personality was just simulated, like Bender's. I just mean you're an artificial intelligence, Bender. Like the people in the professor simulation. Sending him into an existential crisis. The professor attempts to unplug the simulated universe to save power, but Bender resists. Luckily, the professor is also too weak to unplug it, so he leaves it. Or maybe I'm just extraordinarily weak. That is a possibility. Oh, bother. I'll just keep the simulation running a little longer. But not soon enough to stop Bender from tackling him. In the simulated universe, Fry wants to watch all TV ever made. That's it! I found my life's goal! I, Philip J. Fry, hereby pledge to watch every TV show ever made. Oh, Lord. Obviously recreating the events of the impossible stream. <laughs> These innocent bitbags may be artificial, like me, but they don't know that. I'm telling you they're nothing but ones and zeros. R. Farnsworth insists that the simulated people aren't really alive, but Leela agrees with Bender that they are. Professor, I think Bender might be right. No, you don't. I mean, we're nothing more than atoms, right? But somehow, we are more. <laughs> Leela standing by Bender and advocating for the simulated universe is a nice return to form for her character after they seem to not really know what to do with her for a lot of this season. Bender makes the professor promise to keep the simulation running and not reveal that the simulated universe isn't real to its inhabitants. After the professor has a eureka moment on the toilet, he figures out how to keep the simulation running, and they drill down to the sewer to use it for hydroelectric power for the Simputron. I loved some of the visual gags while they were burrowing down like a chunk of the land Titanic and these road signs. 
The professor connects the power and says they can run the simulation at a higher resolution, so now the people in the simulation resemble the actual Planet Express crew. The simulated professor announces that he, too, has completed a simulation of the universe and reveals his own pixelated little crew. The Amy in the simulation starts asking the same kind of questions our Amy asked the professor. I mean, what if our laws of physics are just the computer code of some big, brilliant professor playing God up there? But he insists even if they are simulated, there's no way to know. Hmm, quantum mechanics is pretty ridiculous, Uh, but it's a moot point. Even if we are living in a simulation, there's no possible way of knowing. Almost immediately, two black holes colliding glitches the sub-simulation and gives simulated Amy the idea to try to break their universe by creating an event that will overload whatever computer is powering it. Some phenomena are so wildly complex that they'd be impossible for any computer to simulate. For example, a collapsing magnetic star or magnetar. But what if we intentionally caused a magnetar to collapse? Leela is reluctant to find out whether they're simulated or not. Although... I'm not sure I want to know the answer to that. And honestly, same. If we're in a simulation, I don't need to know. I'm good. They put it to a vote and everyone votes for both because they're useless. But then they just decide they'll always wonder if they don't. Although now we're always going to be wondering. Let's just go. So away they go to collapse a magnetar star and try to break the universe. There'll be no hiding the truth when they see that magnetar glitching out like a big flaming ball of Microsoft Word. Bender decides to go into the simulation and tell them the truth since they'll find out anyways. Well, if they're going to find out anyway, I should be the one to tell them. I'm the only one who truly understands. The professor tells him it's a one-way trip. All right, I'm going in. <gasps> wow. I must warn you, Bender, it'll be a one-way trip. There's no way of returning. And that simulated Bender will get knocked into the next simulation because it's Bender's all the way down. You'd take his place in the simulated world. But what would happen to him? He'd be pushed through to the sub-simulation. And that Bender? It's Bender's all the way down. This is sort of where the concept of turtles all the way down comes in. The idea is basically that, of course, there's this myth that the Earth is balanced on top of four elephants standing on a turtle. Maybe it's just a turtle. I think Terry Pratchett took some liberties. But then, of course, that begs the question, what is the turtle standing on? And of course, the turtle is standing on another turtle, which is then standing on another turtle. It's turtles all the way down. It doesn't have to make sense. Just, just, you know, just go with it. So here... It's Bender's all the way down throughout all these simulations. Bender reboots in the simulated world as simulated Bender. Where where am I? You're right here, Bender. The simulated crew arrives at the star. Fry approaches the whole thing a bit philosophically. But it's actually kind of beautiful. Would it be any less beautiful if it weren't real? I really appreciate Fry in this episode. There's a simple wisdom to the way that Fry sees the world, and I think it gels really well with the message of the episode. Bender starts to tell them about the simulation. Guys, I have something to tell you, and it'll be the hardest bad news I've ever had the pleasure of delivering. Shush, Bender. We're about to find out if we're living in a simulation. Right. It's about that. But Fry interrupts and says it doesn't matter if they're simulated or not. I think it makes no difference at all. Either way, the laws of the universe are way beyond our control. So what can we do? We just make the best of it. I don't know what we're about to see, Leela, but I love you. Now and forever. And that much is real. Bender is touched by Fry's reasoning and thanks him. What did you want to tell us, Robert? Just... (laughs) Thank you! (laughs) That's really cute, you guys. They watch the star start to implode. Meanwhile, the Simputron is struggling to render it, and the professor plans to just pull the plug. Suddenly, our Bender reboots. Rebooting. Where... Where am I? This Bender knows how to save the simulation. It's just that... I know how to save the simulation. Although, there's a good chance he's not our Bender, but a Bender from a different simulation coming on the same errand that our Bender left on. Just look at his reaction to rebooting. Where? Where am I? And the fact that he said he came to tell them something. Oh, I had to come tell you something. At Bender's suggestion, though, they slow time down in the simulation so it won't use as much power. (laughs) We won't need nearly so much power now that I've underclocked the processor. But the denizens of the simulated universe... But won't the simulation run slower? Oh, much slower. So they'll be in like a coma? Oh my, no. They'll never notice any difference. Time will flow the same for them. Meanwhile, the simulated gang watches the star implode as their universe glitches out and Fry and Leela kiss in slow-mo. It's a beautiful sequence and the soundtrack gives it this ethereal, otherworldly quality. Overall, 
This was one of the best episodes of the season, close to I Know What You Did Next Xmas, if not surpassing it. It certainly holds up in terms of Futurama episodes in general. I loved the exploration of simulation theory as both a sci-fi and philosophical concept. It's one of those things that definitely gives me a bit of existential anxiety if I think about it too much. But ultimately, I still land in the same place Fry does. It doesn't matter if we're in a simulation or not, because either way, we can't do anything about it. And our actions still impact the people around us, whether any of us are real or not. So to answer the question I asked at the start of the video, no, it doesn't matter if we're real or not. I think Bender was a great vehicle for exploring the existential crisis of simulation theory because he's had several similar experiences in other episodes over the years. But the way he cared about the simulated universe was really touching and a rare show of empathetic Bender, and it's always a treat to watch. I loved the stuff with Fry and Leela in this episode, from their little Italy romance to their kiss at the end. And I feel like it made up for some of the tedious stuff in last week's episode with Leela and the Space Prince. I know some people might be bothered by the idea that the Planet Express crew we know and love is just a simulation, but honestly, it's one of those things where we just need to be along for the ride and let the writers tell their story. Sort of like in the late Philip J. Fry. Especially since one simulated crew doesn't seem much different from another, it's still the characters we love, just slightly different versions of them. I do think it's really interesting that the crew in the simulated universe wanted to find out whether they were in a simulation and took action to determine that, whereas the crew that we were following in what we assume is the real universe did not actually seem all that interested in finding out whether they were in a simulation or not once Amy had raised the possibility. It's just interesting that these two seemingly identical crews took such different approaches when asked the same question. I do think the idea of infinite benders going into infinite simulations is really cool and kind of reminds me of Benderama, although this episode is definitely better written and more sophisticated. I think All the Way Down was a strong finish in a season that was otherwise a bit mid, so I'm glad they ended on such a high note. This and the Christmas episode were the two that felt the most like the writers really found their groove. I really hope it gets renewed for another season, as I would think that's when the writers will really get back into the swing of things more consistently. But even so, this season offered us quite a few great jokes and a couple really solid episodes, so I'm still grateful for it. That's just my opinion, though. What were your favorite episodes this season? What did you think of All the Way Down? Let me know in the comments section down below. Like, share, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time. Feeder Sane.